untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I was taking a look at a red-green werewolf tribal deck featuring a ton of new cards from Innistrad Midnight Hunt which has just released on Arena and with a new expansion comes a new mechanic. The Daybound and Nightbound mechanic appears on multiple werewolves in our deck including casting Naturalist, 2 mana for a 2-2 human werewolf add on common and whenever the Naturalist attacks we add red or green to our mana pool and until end of turn we don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. This is the daybound side of the card, meaning that if it's not already day or night, it will turn to day as a naturalist enters the battlefield, and for the rest of the game we have to keep track of the day and night cycle, even if the naturalist leaves the battlefield. Then the way it switches to night time is if the active player, this could even be your opponent, casts no spells during their turn, then on the following upkeep it will turn to night time and all daybound permanents transform into their nightbound sides and they will also enter the battlefield on their nightbound side. And then the way it switches back to daytime is if the active player casts two or more spells during their turn, then on the following upkeep it will turn back to daytime and all nightbound permanents transform back into their daybound sides. So the nightbound side of Cassic Naturalist is Lord of the Olvenwald, a 3-3 werewolf giving other wolves and werewolves we control plus 1 plus 1 and then it has the same mana ability, so quite the upgrade on the nightbound side and the same is true for Reckless Stormseeker, 3 mana for a 2-3 human werewolf and rare, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus 1 plus 0 and gains haste until end of turn, so the Stormseeker can target itself with the ability, attacking as a 3-3 haste essentially, and then on the Nightbound side we get Storm Charged Slasher, a 3-4 werewolf, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains both Trample and Haste until end of turn. So quite a beating. And then at 4 mana we get to play with the new Planeswalker, Arlen the Pax Hope, starts out at 4 loyalty and also has the Nightbound and Daybound mechanic. And on the Daybound side we get to use the minus 3 first, creating a pair of 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens. And then the plus 1 says until your next turn you may cast creature spells as though they had flash and each creature we control enters the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So very useful ability for transforming all our werewolves into their nightbound sides as we simply get to pass a turn and since we haven't cast any spells we get to transform to night time and then during the opponent's turn we can still spend our mana in an efficient manner by casting all sorts of creatures. We can even cast multiple creatures during the opponent's turn and not having it switch back to daytime and then Arlen also transforms into the Moon's Fury which can plus two to add red and green mana to our mana pool and the zero ability turns Arlen into a 5-5 werewolf creature with trample, indestructible and haste so it can apply a ton of pressure. And then one of the other main incentives for playing the werewolf deck is Tovolar Dire Overlord, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary human werewolf at rare, saying whenever a wolf or werewolf we control deals comma damage to a player we get to draw a card, so we can potentially draw multiple cards if we're hitting with multiple wolves or werewolves, and at the beginning of our upkeep if we control 3 or more wolves and or werewolves it becomes knight and then transform any number of human werewolves you control. So this is an incredibly impactful ability to have in a werewolf deck as it means we don't have to worry about not casting any spells to have it go to night time. We can simply add more wolves to the board and at some point it will transform to night time and all our werewolves will become much better including Tovalar himself which will turn into a 4-4 creature with the same card draw ability and also has a nice mana sync ability for X, a red and a green saying target wolf or werewolf we control gets plus X plus O and gains trample until end of turn. So very nice ability reminiscent of Kassig Wolfrun. So taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we're still playing some cheap removal spells like Frostbite, which is supported by 16 snow-covered lands in the mana base, 4 snow-covered mountains, 10 snow-covered forests and 2 copies of Highland Forest, so we get to deal 2 damage to a creature or planeswalker unless we control 3 or more snow permanents, in which case we get to deal 3 damage instead. I did also experiment with Moonrager's Slash in the deck, and that gets to potentially deal 3 damage to any target, including the opponent, for just 1 
one mana if it's night time, but too often it's not going to be night time, and you find yourself holding this clunky three mana removal spell when you need to answer the opponent's cheap creature, so I prefer Frostbite instead. And then we also have two copies of Blizzard Brawl, which can let us fight with one of our creatures and one of the opponent's creatures, and if we control three or more snow permanents, our creature also gets plus one plus so and indestructible until end of turn. And then finally two copies of Snakeskin Veil at one mana, putting a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and it also gains hexproof until end of turn. So perfect for protecting one of our key werewolves, as we can simply pass a turn, maybe use one of our mana sync abilities to make it go to night time, and then Snakeskin Veil still protects our creature during the opponent's turn. And then at 2 mana, we also have 2 copies of Outland Liberator, a 2-2 human werewolf that for 1 mana can sacrifice itself to destroy an artifact or enchantment, although if we can transform it into Frenzied Trap Breaker, it will be a 3-3 werewolf, saying whenever the Trap Breaker attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls, so we potentially get to destroy multiple artifacts or enchantments, and we can still sacrifice a Trap Breaker for 1 mana to destroy an artifact or enchantment. And then we also have the full playset of a ranger class, which will generate a wolf token when it enters a battlefield, which is still very synergistic with the rest of our deck. And then leveling up ranger class is also a great way to spend our mana, and maybe let it switch to night time, as we're not casting any spells. So on level 2 we get to put a plus one plus one counter on one of our attacking creatures every turn, and then at level 3 for 4 mana we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. Then a Werewolf Pack Leader, not from Innistrad, still a very powerful werewolf in the deck, as a 2 mana 3-3 three, three with pack tactics, saying when a werewolf attacks, if we attacked with creatures with total power 6 or greater this turn, we get to draw a card. So the Pack Leader sets up a very nice turn 3, if we can curve Pack Leader into Stormseeker. So the Pack Leader sets up a very nice turn 3 with our Stormseeker, as we can give itself haste and attack for 3, dealing 6 total and drawing a card with a Pack Leader, so very difficult for the opponent to recover from if we're on the play. And then we also get an activated ability, once again useful for transforming our werewolves. And for 4 mana, until end of turn, the pack leader turns into a 5-3 trampler, so it can get some more damage in. And then topping off our curve, at 6 mana, we have a Tovalar's Huntmaster, a 6-6 human werewolf and a rare, that when it enters a battlefield, generates a pair of 2-2 green wolf creature tokens. And then on the Nightbound side, it also has that enter battlefield ability, but also when the pack leader attacks, we get to make that same pair of wolf tokens. So especially powerful if we can give it haste with a Stormseeker, and make 4 wolves the turn it comes into play essentially. And then it also has an activated ability for 4 mana, saying another target wolf or werewolf we control fights target creature we don't control, giving us even more removal. And it is possible for the deck to ramp into the Huntmaster ahead of schedule, thanks to the mana from Naturalist, and Arlen the Moon's Fury can also add to red and green. Then the mana base does not include any creature lands, I started out with a Lair of the Hydra, but eventually cut it since I didn't find myself activating it, and I wanted to make room for more snow-covered forests to make sure we can enable Frostbite and Blizzard Brawl. And then we've got 10 snow-covered forests, 4 snow-covered mountains, 2 copies of Highland Forest, 4 of the Red-Green Pathway, and then also 4 copies of Rockfall Vale, the new Red-Green Dual Land from Innistrad, which enters a battlefield tapped unless you control 2 or more other lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a potentially very nice hand. Turn 2 pack leader, turn 3 Stormseeker. That's what dreams are made of. Playing on the new Innistrad battlefield as well. Opponent's mono black so far. And they're not gonna let us have any fun. Let's play the Stormseeker then, and hope the opponent plays some creatures for us to kill. Red, black, clay, so just a treasure deck. Can still play Ranger class and attack with a Hasty Wolf. And now we can level it up. Seems better than killing Kalein, which is probably going to get sacrificed to a deadly dispute anyway. And then against Red Black, I guess I'll put counter on Stormseeker in case they have a Dragon's Fire dealing 3 damage in the future. 
also spreads out our power, so if they do cast their deadly disputes, they can soak up as much damage. So let's see if they've got a gold span dragon here. They usually do. Double frostbite, not the cleanest answer for it, but an answer nonetheless. It's gonna be a backup Kalein instead. That's fine. And a Dragonkin Berserker. 4-4. Four, four. Okay. So, can play Naturalists, attack, and then use the mana we make from Naturalists before blocks to double Frostbite. I guess that's reasonable. So I might have to go full control for this to work, just in case. And then... Where do we put the counter? Could go Stormseeker again in case of a 4 damage Dragon's Fire, in case they top deck a uh, Goldspan Dragon. Sure. Although they've already shown Infernal Grasp, so maybe I should be diversifying a bit more. Make red. There's a Dragon's Fire, so I guess that worked out. So no goal span? Well, never mind. I guess they must have top decked it, or they just didn't want to kill the Stormseeker with 4 damage. Tovalar, excellent draw. Give that haste. And this is lethal. Unless they've got another removal spell. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Yeah, hence okay. Get to play Ranger class, level it up while keeping up Snakeskin Veil, vale, and then Arlen to hopefully take over. Turn to Aspirants. We currently cannot answer. Sparring Regimen, alright. So opponents got their own version of Ranger class. Gets probation, so they're looking to beat down. Pack leader's interesting. So let's start by attacking. See if they wanna trade here, I doubt it. I think we then Arlen make two tokens. You wanna fight me and, my <laughs> Good and then next turn flashing in pack leader will give it an extra counter or two. War Singer, quite effective if it gets to get Creatures back from the graveyard. Ooh, Tovalar, excellent draw. So we can switch it to nighttime. Could technically attack with my 4 4. And then. Snakeskin Veil. But then I wouldn't be able to transform my werewolves, and it's a lot less mana efficient than 
playing both creatures out here. So let's try this approach. Gold span, always good. So that's gonna take out Arlen. The War Singer also attacking, as is the Aspirant. So we have options available. If I flash in both creatures, I don't have Snake Skin Veil up. Potent cast only one spell, but they could cast a second if they want to, to switch it back to daytime, although Tovalar, if he survives, will have three wolves to switch it back to night. Yeah, the question is whether this two mana represents another removal spell, which could be bad for us. Otherwise, Tovalar comes into play as a 5-5 thanks to the plus one counter. Hmm. How about we just pack leader? They didn't seem to have a response. And then... Yeah, I guess we double block War Singer here. Let that happen, and then I can still flash in Tovalar. Which I didn't really want to trade. Right, put in Dosko for probation. That's fine. So that does switch it back to daytime. But Tovalar switches it back to night. And then we should still have decent attacks available. Play this level up. And then I'll attack with both and see if they want to trade here. Opponent takes it, that's fine. Draw two. And then... Do I play Naturalist or do I keep up Snakeskin Veil? Could also keep up Frostbite and Snakeskin Veil in case they have the other 5 mana dragon with lifelink. Yeah, we can still play the Naturalist next turn. And then it will still pump our other wolves. And yeah, there's the adult gold dragon I was afraid of, so... See where the counter goes, and then frostbite. So that worked out perfectly. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, on to the next one. We are on the draw with a fine hand. Good curve of creatures, bit of interaction, and already two snow-covered lands for Frostbite. So I can keep up Frostbites. Upside of playing Veil is potentially casting a turn to Pack Leader, but we've got Naturalist and Ranger classes, alternatives. Opponent foretells against Blue Reds which foretells on turn 2 if it's a control deck with counter spells. There is an advantage to getting a werewolf in play, just to get the day and night cycle going. So, yeah, let's play Naturalist over a Ranger class. So now if they pass without doing anything, it switches to Knights, and that's definitely going to benefit us. Okay. Well, let's play Stormseeker. And hit for 9 on turn 3. Even if extra mana available, but not gonna put it to use. Could see a Sweeper. 
Then you 4 mana deal 5 damage to all creatures in red. Although we can still follow up with an extra Stormseeker. Okay. So we potentially have 5 mana if the Lord is allowed to attack. Which is enough for a 3 drop plus Ranger class. So whatever I play next is definitely getting countered. They could still have a removal spell besides it. Kind of want to play the three beforehand, because Ranger class we can play second main, whereas these provide some sort of advantage. Although, given how the game is going, maybe we don't really need the extra advantage that these provide. So, let's play Ranger class. If this resolves, I could technically level up as well. Because if I double spell, it does switch it back to daytime. So our opponent let the ranger class resolve. Hmm. Leveling up ranger class feels like a bit of a trap, so let's move to combats and see what happens next. Give our wolf token haste. Opponent's going to intervene, bouncing the slasher, but the trigger's already on the stack. Hit for eight. And then... If I want to keep nighttime, I don't play another three drop here. Can just level up. Sure. They're already kind of in a position where they're forced to have a sweeper, so don't feel the need to add more to the board. Especially when Double Storm Seeker in hand represents multiple haste threats. Right, crush the weak dealing two. And another crush the weak, fair enough. So that will switch it back to daytime, but a storm seeker by itself is lethal. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Looking at turn two pack leader. One snow land away from an indestructible blizzard brawl. And there it is. Snakeskin veil for protection. Fizzle the learn ability on inspiration. And we even get to draw a card here. Probably still worth it to level up, even though we could see what we draw first. And then I probably wanted to play a green source in case we top deck another pack leader. Didn't get punished. Inspiration kills our token. Stormseeker, great top deck. And then we'll pump itself so it survives another Igneous Inspiration. Ooh, Huntmaster is going to be juicy if the Stormseeker survives. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, keepable hands. Turn to Naturalists into Tovalar. Can even Frostbite at instant speed thanks to the mana from Naturalist. So potentially up against an aggressive Elf deck. Hmm. 
yeah, hopefully they just play a creature. Disciple's fine. I think we hang on to the second Tovalar in case of removal. And then we can attack, make red mana. Opponent's likely to double block. Otherwise we get to draw a card. Opponent takes it. Alright, that works. And then... Don't feel compelled to kill anything. Warmaster, better target for that Frostbite. So... Could attack with everyone what happens. Yeah, and it probably plays out fine. Kind of don't want them trading Warmaster for Naturalist, but don't expect them to. Opponent takes five. All right, double Huntmaster in hand. We can ramp into with a Naturalist, so let's kill Warmaster. Play a pack leader. And then next turn, Tovalar also promises to turn it to Knight. Warmaster's back. And we get to attack. Opponent packs it in. Didn't even get to play the Huntmaster. Yeah, we would have gotten to attack. And then we've got the threat of activation on Tovalar for what it's worth. But then making mana lets us play Tovalar's pack leader. Making a bunch of wolf tokens and then... Yeah, it's pretty difficult for the opponent to recover from there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with, yeah, a great hand. Can hope to set up Pack Leader into Stormseeker this time. Let's go for it. Fireblade Charger, maybe a Goblin's deck. Hit for six, draw a card. Next turn we can play Arlen. Alright, never mind. More of a warrior deck. War leader pumping charger is pretty good. Means that charger deals 2 damage when it dies. So what's our play? I could play double naturalists. Give one haste so I can attack with it. And then... Make a mana for Snakeskin Veil. Although they can then block Naturalist and kill both, so I guess I play the other one second main. Alright, I guess that's fine. So draw a card. Make a green mana. And play another Naturalist. Alright, same creatures as before, but now we can Blizzard Brawl, as well as play Arlen. So, sequencing-wise, I guess I can attack with a Hasty Wolf if I really want to. So let's say we do this. And our opponent's in trouble. They can trade for my wolf token, take 9, 
and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with uh, nice opening hands. Double naturalist to give us a bit of a mana boost to deploy the rest of our hands. Still hoping for land three so we can double spell. Uh -huh, a Lunark Veteran, so maybe a Black-White Sacrifice deck. The day and night cycle begins. And sadly, a Blood Chief's Thirst gonna mess up our curve. So Naturalist doesn't let me Frostbite, but I think I need the mana for Arlen. And there's nothing worth killing yet. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant we definitely want to take out. Pretty aggressive attack. Okay. So now I get to Arlen plus Frostbites. Frostbite now. I could wait, see what else they do. Although we could potentially run into a sacrifice effect. Power word kill, sure. It might change their play knowing that the Aspirin's gonna survive. All right, in this case, still probably going to kill the Aspirant anyway. Small chance they would not kill uh, Arlen here. But especially in the case where they put an extra counter on Veteran, that seems pretty relevant when we're making a bunch of 2-2 creatures. Okay, another pack leader could let me double pack leader, although playing another Arlen also sounds appealing since then we can plus transform to knights and play pack leader with extra counters on them. Valkyrie. Alright, so this is more of a life gain deck after all. Ooh, Tuvalar is great too. So, no attacks at the moment. But we're setting up an ambush. Arlen down. So casting two spells of our own in the opponent's turn doesn't switch back to daytime. Opponent's not doing anything, so I think I can afford to go double pack leader and then Tovalar in my turn. Unless they've got two instant speed removal spells here. Infernal Grasp, sure. Yeah, maybe they do have another removal spell, which will switch it back to daytime. Uh, that's unfortunate. But at least Dovalar survived. And we'll get to draw some cards. And then... 
play Stormseeker. And yeah, Arlen number three was probably going to be the final nail in the coffin. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Missing the second green source. Hand does have potential. Just need to top deck a green source and we're in business pretty much. I'll try it. Turn one charger. Potentially a goblin's deck. Looks pretty aggressive. All right. Probably go with pack leader first over Tovalar. Although it's a close call, Tovalar is more mana efficient. If I draw land, I could maybe level up ranger class, play pack leader. But if they have removal, I think this will play out a little bit better. All right, royal eruption kills pack leader. And then now, Hasty Stormseeker looks good. And then really hope for a land here. Alright, there we go. Now Tovalar is safe. Could Blizzard Brawl, but no need to kill Charger. Okay, Frostbite can get Charger out of the way, draws a card, probably worth it. And then I'll see what I draw before leveling up Ranger class. Right, still have Snakeskin Veil available. Alright, Adversary is a good one. Gonna get back Rebuke, in which we can Snakeskin Veil. Had we just leveled up Ranger class, I would have been able to hang on to an extra Veil. But that's okay. And then now... Could do the same of Ranger class level up. Yeah, it's probably fine. And then we'll kill the adversary. It's gonna be pretty tough for Monorets to kill my werewolf now. Sweet. So... We got to see our red-green werewolf deck do its thing a few times. Definitely some standout cards. The Stormseeker has been quite impressive, and of course Tovalar letting us switch easily to nighttime, as well as providing card advantage and potentially a nice mana sink to close out the game, is incredibly strong too, assuming you can keep three wolves in play, which should not be too difficult. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.